فاشرف بي لاشتغالي بالعلم ولا تبغي به ما عشت يا ذا بدلا ويا له من شرف عظيم الحمد لله رب العالمين له الحمد الحسن والثناء الجميل وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له يقول الحق وهو يهدي السبيل وأشهد أن سيدنا ونبينا محمد صلى الله عليه وعلى آله وأصحابه والتابعين لهم بإحسان إلى يوم الدين أما بعد The way I plan to speak about the topic بإذن الله الكريم is in the following points The first point إن شاء الله تعالى is I'm going to define what تدبر is And I'm also going to speak about the commands that have come regarding pro and pondering on the Qur'an And the third point that I'm going to speak about is Arkanu Tadabbur, the pillars in which Tadabbur stands on And the fourth one is Al-alaqatu bayna maqasid al-Qur'an wa tadabbur fiha The relationship between knowing the objectives of the Qur'an and pondering on the Qur'an And last but not least, I will be speaking about Wasailu Tadabbur The means in which if a person takes he can ponder on the Qur'an And all of these points when I mention them I will be mentioning how the Salaf were in regards to this particular point So my topic inshaAllah ta'ala is more generic And more comprehensive than the title that was given to it What does Tadabbur mean? And I always like the, us to give importance to definitions Because if you don't understand the definition If you don't understand the definition Then you can't come with the thing in order to come with the reality of something, what do you need to do? Is you have to understand it first. What does At-Tadabbur mean in the language? At-Tadabbur in the language, it, it comes from the word At-Dubur, the back, the ending. The Arabs, they say, Dubur daba meaning the back, the tail of the riding beast. So from this we can realize that tadbir and tadabbur in a matter is another of al amri looking at the ending of this matter it's basically when you look at the final ending of a matter so you're your upon you're not looking at what it is right now but what is the effects that come from it after and exact and etc this is what tadabbur is in the language in the istilahi meaning so there's two terms before i go to the istilahi meaning there are two terms generally people kind of confuse with one another. What's the difference between a tadabbur and a tafakkur? Tadabbur is looking at something based on the final ending that it's going to lead to. It's a nadaru fi awaqib al-umur. Looking at the imata from its final conclusions. Like in a tafakkur is a nadaru, it's to look at something with evidence. It's when you look at something based on evidence. That's what tafakkur means. What does it mean in the shari'i meaning when the sharia commands you to ponder? What does it mean? It means what we just mentioned. It's another fi awaqib al umur. It's to look at the finding and ending of a matter, and that's not it. And the effects have to show on your limbs. And that's the additional meaning that the sharia added to what tadabbur is. And we're, gonna, we're going to expand on that later. So it's not just looking at the Quran and saying, wow. Subhanallah, this verse told us this and just leaving it there Rather it is that the understanding and the benefits that you've taken It starts to manifest and show on your limbs So I hope now we know what a tadabbur is We're now going to move on to the second point Which is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala He commanded us to ponder in the Quran Allah said in the Quran أَفَلَا يَتَدَبَّرُونَ الْقُرْآنَ Do they not ponder on the Quran? Am ala qulubin akfaluha or are there locks on their hearts? Also, Allah says in another ayah, Afalam yaddabbarul qawla, have they not pondered on the speech? Am ja'ahum or has it come to them? Ma lam yati aba'ahumul awaleen, that which has not come to their forefathers. Also, Allah says in another ayah, Kitabun a book, anzalnahu which we sent down, ilayka to you, Muhammad. Mubarakun, this book is full of blessings and it's full of barakah. Why? لِيَدَّبَّرُوا آيَاتِ So you can ponder on its verses. وَلِيَتَذَكَّرَ أُولُوا الْأَلْبَابِ And those who are wise and the intellectual people can also take a lesson from it. Also Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He says in another ayah, أَفَلَمْ يَدَّبَّرُوا أَفَلَا يَتَدَّبَّرُونَ الْقُرْآنَ Do they not ponder on the Qur'an? 
ولو كان من عند غير الله لوجدوا فيه اختلافا كثيرا and if they were to receive this Quran from other than Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala they would have found a lot of contradiction in it this Quran doesn't have a contradiction in it because it comes from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala Al-Imam Al-Ajurri rahimahullah he says in his kitab Akhlaq wa Hamalat Al-Quran a powerful statement I'm going to read on you he says Al-Ala tarawna do you not see Rahimakumullah may Allah have mercy on you إِلَىٰ مَوْلَاكُمْ Can you not see? May Allah have mercy on each and every one of you what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is doing. كَيْفَ يَحُثُّ خَلْقَهُ عَلَىٰ أَنْ يَتَدَبَّرُ كَلَامَهُ The way Allah is urging His creation to ponder on His speech. وَمَنْ تَدَبَّرَ كَلَامَهُ Anyone who ponders on Allah's speech. This is the benefits that come out of it. عَرَفَ الرَّبَّ عَزَّ وَجَلَّ That person is going to know Allah. If you ponder on Allah's speech, you're going to know Him. You know why? There is nothing better to explain Allah to you than Allah Himself. So He's telling you about Himself. Pondering on the Quran is the greatest way to know Him, subhanahu wa ta'ala. وَعَرَفَ عَظِيمَ سُلْطَانِهِ وَقُدْرَتِهِ Then the person starts to gain knowing the supreme power and ability and strength Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has. So you start seeing that person not sinning in private. It starts to affect him. وَعَرَفَ عَظِيمَ تَفَضُّلِهِ عَلَى الْمُؤْمِنِينَ And the person starts to know how Allah has bestowed never-ending mercy on us. How kind and generous he is to us, subhanahu wa ta'ala. وَعَرَفَ And the person also comes to know مَا عَلَيْهِ مِنْ فَرْضِ عِبَادَتِهِ The things that are obligatory on him to come with. He starts to know it because he now is connected to the Qur'an. فَأَلْزَمَ نَفْسَهُ الْوَاجِبَةِ so that person sticks to the obligatory things. He makes sure he comes with it. فَحَذِرَ مِمَّا حَذَّرَهُ مَوْلَاهُ الْكَرِيمِ And the person stays and withholds from that which his Lord prohibits him from and tells him to stay away from. وَرَغِبَ فِي مَا رَغَبَهُ فِي And he also pushes himself to that which his Lord pushes him towards. وَمَنْ كَانَتْ هَذِي صِفَتُهُ Al-Imam Al-Ajurriyu said anyone who these characteristics are his characteristics. عِنْدَ تِلَاوَتِهِ الْقُرْآنِ When he reads the Quran. وَعِنْدَ اسْتِمَاعِهِ مِنْ غَيْرِهِ and when, he, and, and when he hears the Qur'an from, from other than himself, anyone whose characteristics is like this, كَانَ الْقُرْآنُ لَهُ شِفَاءً This person, for him, the Qur'an is a cure. فَاسْتَغْنَى بِلَا مَالٍ He becomes rich even though he has no money. وَعَزَّ بِلَا عَشِيرَةٍ And he becomes honorable even if he has no family members, even if he doesn't have friends. وَأَنِسَ بِمَا يَسْتَوْحِشُ مِنْهُ غَيْرُهُ he finds company when other people are lonely. He finds company because the Quran gives him company. His aspiration is the continuation of the recitation of the Quran. This is what he asks himself. He says to himself, When am, when am I going to take a lesson from this verse? So whenever he's reading the Quran, and every time he continuously carries on reading, he says to himself, when am I going to take a lesson from this verse? And his objective is not going to be, when am I going to finish the surah? Rather, his ultimate goal is, When he comes across a verse, he doesn't understand what it means. He says, when am I going to understand what this means? When am I going to know what Allah is saying to me here? When am I going to withhold from what I'm doing? When am I going to take these verses as a lesson? Because he believes reciting these verses is a form of ibadah for him. And ibadah cannot occur with heedlessness. And Allah is the one who is able to make you one who attains this. So this is what comes with pondering on the Quran. And Allah commanded us in many places to ponder. What are the pillars in which pondering stands on? The first one is التفكر, to think والتفهم, and it's to understand The first pillar in which التدبر stands on is التفكر, is to think and التفهم, trying to make yourself understand the book of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala You're reading a verse, what does it mean? What is Allah trying to say to me? And as we said before, what does it mean thinking? It means, 
you look at all of these matters which are mentioned in this verse, what's the final conclusion of it? If you don't take it, what's going to be the final abode for you? If you take it on board and you do it, what's your final abode? If you leave it off, what's your final abode? You ponder and you think. This will increase in your heart at tasdiq believing in Allah. Wal ma'rifah, recognizing Him. And it will also increase in your heart at ta'zim li amri Allahi, honoring and venerating Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's commands. Number two, the second pillar is husul athari dhalik. That the effect of these verses that you're reading, it shows on your al-jawarih, your limbs. It's not just you read a verse, you read an ayah, but it becomes something that your body starts to implement. You become a trustworthy person. You become a sincere person. You become an honorable person. It changes you. The day you become the people of the Quran, you're changed. You're a totally different individual. Walidalika the Prophet told us alayhi salatu wasalam in the hadith Al Imam Muslim and Bukhari both narrated fi Sahihima min hadith Abi Musa al Ashari Radiallahu Ta'ala Anhu that the Prophet said Mathalil Mathalul Mu'mini the likes of a mu'min is Aladi Yakra ul Quran, the believer who reads the Quran, Kamathalil Utrujja, he is like a citrus. Rihuha Tayyibud, its fragrance is nice. وَطَعْمُهَا طَيِّبٌ And the taste is very nice. وَمَثَلُ الْمُؤْمِنِ الَّذِي لَا يَقْرَأُ الْقُرْآنَ And as for the believer who doesn't read the Qur'an, كَمَثَلِ التَّمْرَةِ He's like a date. لَا رِيحَ لَهَا He has no, the date doesn't have no smell. وَطَعْمُهَا حُلٌ But this taste is very nice. So the believer who doesn't read the Qur'an, he tastes good, like the date, he's good. But there's no fragrance to him. Like there's no fragrance to the date. وَمَثَلُ munafiq And the hip, hypocrite. الَّذِي يَقْرَأُ الْقُرْآنَ Who reads the Qur'an. مَثَلُ الْرَيْحَانَةِ He's like uh, a tree that smells nice. Uh, but رِيحُهَا طَيِّبٌ Its fragrance is nice. وَطَعْمُهَا مُرٌ And its taste is very bitter. وَمَثَلُ الْمُنَافِقِ And the hypocrite. الذي لا يقرأ القرآن who doesn't read the Quran is like the hanzala the hanzala it has no taste and it has no smell to it so this hadith what does it teach us that the believer him reciting the Quran and reading it comes for him two things a good smell and the taste being good well in that case many people they haven't even understood what is meant by reciting the Qur'an? Mujahid ibn Jabrin, when he came to the ayah, يَتْلُولَهُ حَقَّ تِلَاوَتِهِ Because the hadith mentions they read the Qur'an, right? What does it read, mean reading the Qur'an? يَعْمَلُونَ بِهِ They implement it حَقَّ عَمَلِهِ The way it should be implemented. So the Qur'an is not مُجَرَّدُ alfad. It's not just mere words that are read. But it becomes actions and things which a person does. Abdullah ibn Mas'ud said, Inna we, the companions, صعب علينا, it was very hard on us. حف the alfad al Quran, memorizing the wordings of the Quran. وسهل علينا العمل عمل به, and implementing the Quran was very easy for us. We, the companions, memorizing the Quran was very hard, the wordings, but memorizing its boundaries was very easy for us. وإن من بعدنا and those who are going to come after us. It's going to be very easy for them to memorize the wordings. And it's going to be very hard for them to implement what's in the Quran. Abdullah ibn Umar radiallahu ta'ala anhu, he said, Kan al-fadlu the virtue in the companions of the Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, it was not in the memorization of the Quran and a surah. Rather, it is, was in their virtue, the, the one who memorized it and implemented the meanings in it. So when we say in the hadith, Mathalul Mu'mini, the example of a believer who reads the Qur'an here, what does it mean? Hafidha ama qara'a hurufahu, he reads the wordings, and he also comes with the implementation. And that's the haqiqah and the reality of what? At tadabbur That's the reality of tadabbur 
Now I'm going to mention the relationship between the maqasid of the Qur'an and the tadabbur. The objectives that the Qur'an set. And also pondering. What did I say pondering was? Pondering is observing the final ending of what every verse is, right? So every verse in the Qur'an is categorized in one of these. Either that verse is تَقْرِيرُ التَّوْحِيدِ وَأُمُورُ الْعَقِيدَةِ That verse is establishing Tawheed or it is establishing Aqeedah. Number one. The second qadiyya asasiya in which the verse is putting and it's laying down is تَقْرِيرُ الْأَحْكَامِ الشَّرْعِيَةِ It's placing jurisprudent rulings. Ahkam halal and haram and amr and nahi. And the third one is ذِكْرُ الْقِصَصِ Mentioning story of Anbiya السَّابِقِينَ The previous prophets and the messengers that came. وَأَخْبَارِ الْكُفَّارِ وَالْمُشْرِكِينَ And the stories of the disbelievers and the pagans and the polytheists. And how their situation was with their prophets and their messengers. So when the person is reading the Qur'an and he comes to the ayats that talk about At-Tawheed Al-Aqeedah, he reads observing how Allah is talking about it. When he comes to the verses that are talking about Al-Ahkam Al-Shari'i, Al-Halal Wal-Haram, Al-Amr Wal-Nahi, he ponders because he knows what is being told to him here is that this is halal, he needs to submit and follow. He also ponders on the places which he's been told to him that it's haram to stay away from. And when he comes to the verses that are talking about the stories of the previous prophets and the messengers, he looks at it wisely and he observes it. And many of the people, if you look, the reason why they are unable to ponder on the Qur'an is that they don't know the maqasid and the objectives of the Qur'an. And these are the three things that the Qur'an talks about. These are the three foundation in which the Qur'an is dealing with. For example, when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He talks about umur al-aqeedah, He says, قُلْ هُوَ Say to them, Muhammad, huwa Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is al-qadiru, the one who has the ability عَلَىٰ أَنْ يَبْعَثَ عَلَيْكُمْ for him to send out unto you عَذَابًا مِنْ فَوْقِكُمْ a punishment from beneath you أَوْ مِنْ تَحْتِ أَرْجُلُكُمْ or to, from above you or from beneath your feet أَوْ يَلْبِسَكُمْ شِيَعًا or Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala he makes you into groups وَيُذِيقَ بَعْضَكُمْ بَأْسَ بَعْضٍ and part of a group makes the other group taste pain and agony Unzur, Allah says, ponder the way we are changing the verses for you. One time we're talking to you in what? Dalalatul Mafum, Dalalatul Mutabaka, Dalalatul Tabamun. We're talking to you directly, indirectly. We're changing the ways that we're approaching every speech. Why? So the people can ponder and understand and take on board what is, what is being said to them. So when Allah spoke about this matter related to Aqeedah, automatically what did He tell us? Ponder. And think, this ayah tells us that the ummah is going to be divided. And Allah mentions here that the people are going to be divided into groups. And the groups are going to make each other pay, taste pain. This group is going to be making takfir on the other group. Or tabdi'ah, mutadi'ah, kafir. And it's going to make people taste pain and agony. Hasn't that happened? The verse, when it came down, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he begged Allah, he supplicated. قُلْ هُوَ الْقَاهِرُ قَادِرُ Allah is the one who is able. عَلَىٰ أَنْ يَبْعَثَ عَلَيْكُمْ عَذَابًا مِنْ فَوْقِكُمْ مِنْ فَوْقِكُمْ From above you, the Prophet said, اللَّهُمَّ أَعُوذُ بِوَجْهِكُ Oh Allah, I seek refuge in your face. Don't do this to my ummah. And it was given to the Prophet. Oh مِنْ تَحْتِ أَرُجُلِكُمْ Or beneath your feet. And the Prophet said, Oh Allah, don't make my ummah go through this. And Allah accepted it from him. أَوْ يَلْبِسَكُمْ شِيَعًا And Allah brings you into groups. وَيُذِيقَ بَعْضَكُمْ بَأْسَ بَعْضٍ The Prophet, he said, I asked Allah, and Allah told me he's not going to give me this one. The Ummah have been divided into groups, sahih? And they've made each other taste pain. So this is an ayah related to the matters of aqeedah. A person will ponder and he will think, and it will make him understand. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he talks about, for example, 
ahkamul halal wal haram. Allah says in the ayah, Uhilla lakum, it is being made permissible for you. Laylat al siyami, the night of fasting, al rafath, intimacy with your wives. Ilan isaikum to your wives. Hunna libasul lakum, your wife is a garment for you. Wa antum libasul lahunna, you are a garment for your wife. You're going to ponder here. What does a garment do for you? The garment does the following. Number one, the garment, it covers your aura. So your wife doesn't tell the people your mistakes and your shortcomings. The husband doesn't tell the people his wife's shortcomings. He doesn't talk about his wife to the people about it. He's a garment. The garment doesn't tell the aura of a person. The person's pondering here. Also, the garment makes you look beautiful. When you dress nicely, if you take off your clothes, you don't look good. When you wear your clothes, you look good. You're, you have... Uh, you're chubby, you're fat, but you wear a type of clothes, people go and say to you, SubhanAllah, you lost a lot of weight. Uh, so the wife is like that for the husband. She beautifies him. When, she, when he's out and about and his face is, she puts cream on his face. The same is the husband. He makes sure that when he buys himself something from outside, he buys something for her as well. The point is, we're pondering on the verse. This is what the ayah mentions. And the ayah goes on. So these verses, when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions it, كَذَلِكَ He says at the ending, يُبَيِّنُ Allah clarifies for you. آيَاتِهِ His verses. لِلنَّاسِ لَعَلَّهُمْ يَتَّقُونَ And He does this for you so you, to, so you can come with piety. I'm clarifying the verses for you. I'm explaining these matters for you. And this is ahkam shar'iyah, which is halalan haram. When Allah talks about the stories, He says to the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, وَتُلُوا عَلَيْهِمْ نَبِي اللَّهِ Muhammad read on them. وَتُلُوا عَلَيْهِمْ نَبَأَ الَّذِي آتَيْنَاهُ آيَاتِنَا The one who we gave him our verse. فَانْسَلَخَ مِنْهَا He went out of our verses. He turned away from it. فَانْسَلَخَ مِنْهَا فَأَتْبَعَهُ الشَّيْطَانُ فَكَانَ مِنَ الْغَاوِينَ And he followed the path of shaytan. He took that path and he became one who became deviated. Allah then says, وَلَوْ شِئْنَا لَرَفَعْنَاهُ بِهَا وَلَكِنَّهُ this is a story of a man who Allah gave him subhanahu wa ta'ala the book. He understood the book that Allah sent down on him. He had knowledge, but he turned away from the book. He chose the worldly glamours and the glitters of the world. And then what did Allah say his example is? His example is the example of a dog. If you give the dog, the dog's tongue is still out. If you don't give it to him, his tongue is also still out. So this is a story that you ponder. That the person who turns away from the Qur'an, his reality in this world is like that. So these qissas and these stories are lessons for you. Also, we move on to the final and last point, inshallah ta'ala, which is the wasail, the means in which a person can attain tadabbur. The first one is qira'at al-Qur'an, reciting the Qur'an, is a way to attain and to gain pondering. Studying and learning the Qur'an and trying to understand it. Whenever we say reciting the Qur'an here, we mean what Mujahid said. Reading it, understanding it and digesting it. Now some people may say that the understanding here that you're saying that we need to come with, does it mean that we have to understand it? كَفَهْمِ الْعُلَمَاءِ الْمُجْتَهِدِينَ like the noble scholars, the way they've understood it, we'll say that. But it means that you understand min jihati dalalati al amma, the overall general meaning that the verse is giving you. ولذلك العلامة محمد الأمين الشنقيطي رحمه الله, when he talks in the ayah فلا يتدبرون القرآن أم على قلوب أقفالها, he goes and he mentions many benefits regarding it. And he mentions in there, Al-Alama Muhammad Al-Amin Al-Shanqiyatiyu, he mentions that it is not a condition that you understand the Qur'an that the way the Mujtahideen understand it. And he also mentions, أَفَلَا يَتَدَبَّرُونَ الْقُرْآنَ أَمْ Here means bal. That it means rather there are locks on their hearts. And it's not a question. رَحِمَهُ اللَّهُ رَحْمَةً وَاسِعًا So I advise you all to go to his explanation of the verse. The second one is Al-Amalu Bima Fihi, implement what's in it. If you want to attain a tadabbur of the Qur'an, implement what's in, uh, in it. Well, Aisha, when she was asked, 
the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam's khuluq. How was his characteristics? He she said, "Kana khuluquhu al-Quran." He was what? He was what? His manners was the Quran. Now sometimes you find people say the the Prophet was the walking Quran. This is wrong. Because what that entails is that the Quran is created. The Prophet is created. And the Quran is not created. Okay, brothers. But the Quran, the manners that are in it, the Prophet وسلم, he took it on board. He implemented the commands and he stayed away from the prohibition. Walidarika Hudayfa said, Ya Ma'shar al Qurra, all those you all, all those of you who read the Quran, istaqimu, be steadfast. فَقَدْ سَبَقْتُمْ سَبْقًا بَعِيدًا You have what? You have truly been placed very far ahead. فَإِنْ, فإن أَخَذْتُمْ If you take the Qur'an on board by implementing it, then you will find success. And if you turn towards your right and left, meaning you deviate from it, لَقَدْ ضَلَلْتُمْ You then become misguided, a clear-cut misguidance. The third path, my beloved brothers and sisters, is... Ta'alimuhu, teaching it, wa da'watu ilay, and calling the people to it. This is the third way to attain a tadabbur of the Quran. The Prophet said, Khayrakum, the best amongst you is, man ta'allam al Quran, the one who learns the Quran, wa allamahu, and he teaches the Quran. Walidalika Abdullah ibn Umar said, Alaykum bil Quran, upon you is the Quran, fa ta'allamuhu, learn it, wa allimu abna'akum. وَعَلِّمُوهُ أَبْنَاءَكُمْ And teach the Qur'an to your children. فَإِنَّكُمْ For you are عَنْهُ تُسْأَلُونَ You will be asked about the Qur'an and you will be asked about your children. وَبِهِ تُؤْجَرُونَ And the Qur'an you will be rewarded based on it. وَكَفَى بِهِ وَاعِظًا The Qur'an is enough for a reminder. لِمَنْ عَقِلَ The one who actually understands and ponders on it. Number four is قِيَامُ layl standing at night and reading ولذلك الله says إن ناشئة الليل هي أشد وطأن ما معنى وطأن أي للقلب it's the thing that can most affect the heart the Quran being recited at night in قيام الليل is a what is the best thing for the heart وأقوى مقيلة and it's the best speech to spend in the night it's embarrassing a person who claims to be practicing and he doesn't pay Qiyamul Layl. Even a little portion at night. And if a wife is married to her husband and he doesn't pray at night, she should wake him up and tell him to pray. And if her husband has a wife and she doesn't pray Qiyamul Layl, he should try to wake her up and make her pray. This is the relationship the spouse needs to have. It's embarrassing and it's wrong that you don't pray Qiyamul Layl. And you don't have a portion at night. Wallahi, it's embarrassing. Wabillah is embarrassing, what Allah is embarrassing. Because Allah comes down, subhanahu wa ta'ala, the last third of the night, and you're what? You're sleeping. And it's the time you want to ask Him for so many, so many things. And you want to connect with Him, subhanahu wa ta'ala. And this is the best time for you to ponder on the Quran. Because there's nobody else to show off to. And there is nobody else to read the Quran for. Walidhalika Abdullah ibn Mubarak, he said, Sa'altu Sufyan al-Thawri. I asked Sufyan al-Thawri, I said to him, الرجل إذا قام إلى الصلاة أي شيء يومي بقراءة وصلاة If a person, he stands at, at night and he prays. Other riwayat have shown that he's referring to at night. What is it that he intends? And what is it that he reads the Quran for? He says, ينوي أن يناجي ربه He reads it. The intention behind it is to converse with his Lord, speak to his Lord. And the best time for that is the late night. Because Allah comes down. Subhanahu wa ta'ala. Five is istihbar al qalb inda qiraati. Reading the Quran with a mind that is clear and away from any distraction. People read the Quran sometimes and they are playing with something or they are laughing or they even WhatsApp in and texting. Walidalik Abdullah ibn Mas'ud said, Man arad al ilma, anyone who wants knowledge. فَلْيُثَوِّرُ الْقُرْآنَ فَإِنَّ فِي عِلْمَ الْأَوَّلِينَ وَالْآخِرِينَ Abdullah ibn Umar said, as Ibn Hazm al-Rahimahullah narrated, مِنْ طَرِيقِ شُعْبَةَ عَنْ أَبِي إِسْحَاقِ بْنُ مُرَّةَ عَنْ عَبْدِ اللَّهِ بْنُ عُمَرٍ That Abdullah ibn Umar said, anybody who wants knowledge of the early people and the ones to come, all of knowledge, you don't need philosophy, you don't need 
What does he mean by Let him turn his eyes regarding on the, on the Mus'haf, on the Qur'an. Let him turn over the pages. Let him read this Qur'an observing and pondering on it. Wallahi, anybody who wants honor, he's in, it's in the Qur'an for him. Because the Qur'an contains any knowledge that you need. Hassan al-Basri, rahimahullah, he said, the people who read the Qur'an are, are one of three types. The first one is, Sinfun ya'kuluna bihi. The first type of people are those who read the Qur'an and they want to get a worldly gain for it. Second type of people is, Sinfun aqamu hurufa wa dayya'u hududa. A group of people who've established its wording. When you hear the Qur'an and them reading it, the letters are correctly pronounced. The makharij, the mad, is it lazim, is it ghayru lazim? How, many, how much huruf is the mad here? They will tell you. They know it. They're very good at it. Lakin bayya'u hududahu. But its boundaries, they have forsaken it. No implementation on it. His beard is cut. After he finishes the recitation in reading the Qur'an, he goes and he smokes his cigarette. And we've seen many of those in Azhar, in Egypt, reciting the Qur'an. And when you read, you, your hair stands. Allah nazzala ahsan al-hadithi kitaban mutashabihan mathani taqsha'iru min hujulud al-ladheen yakshawna rabbahum. Your hair stands, the way that they're reading. But then when he goes out, wallah, you see him smoking on the, on the road, outside the masjid. This is a problem. The third type of people are sinful, a type, amadu ila dawa'il Qur'an. When they went to the Qur'an, they went there for a reason. They want cures from it. Amrad al qulub the illnesses of the heart and the illnesses on the body. They want to cure themselves. They want to mentally cure themselves. They want the Qur'an to be a solution for their problems. These are the people we want Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to make us from amongst. Anything which I have said whilst I was speaking, any mistakes, any shortcomings, any errors, is for me as shaitan and Allah and his messenger are free from it. The best of speech is that which is short and it's to the point. Allahumma ghfir lana dhunubana wa israfana fi amrina wa thabbit aqdamana wa ansurna ala al-qawmi al-kafirin. Allahumma ghfir lana hazlana wa jiddana wa khata'ana wa amdana wa kullu dhalika indana ya rabbal alameen. اللهم لا تجعل الدنيا أكبر همنا ولا مبلغ علمنا ولا تسلط بذن ولا تسلط علينا بذنوبنا من لا يخاف كفينا ولا يرحمنا رب آت نفوسنا تقواها وزكها أنت خير من زكاها أنت وليها ومولاها اللهم ربنا آتنا في الدنيا حسنة وفي الآخرة حسنة وقنا عذاب النار سبحانك اللهم وبحمدك أشهد أن لا إله إلا الله أستغفرك وأتوب إليه